about our correlation coefficient, r. We know r has to be between zero, uh, negative 1 and positive 1. And that will tell us about the strength and the direction of the linear association. But there's more information that we can get from this correlation coefficient. So first, I want to think about two different ways of predicting a response. The first way is to use the grand mean. And this way would be, in the context of the cricket chirp data, is to say that the average temperature is the best way to predict the response. That is that regardless of the chirps per second, the average temperature is always the best guess. So that is y bar is the best uh, prediction for our, hmm. y bar is the best prediction for any of the temperatures, and that would be a constant value, and that's represented here. Y bar is approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can see that this is uh, our representation because this constant value is uh, the same, so 80 degrees as uh, chirps increases. In this case, a prediction error would be Y minus Y bar, and this looks kind of like a residual, so we have observed minus predicted, where here we're predicting everything with the grand mean. Another alternative would be to use the regression equation y hat equals a plus bx. And now we can see that there is a relationship where we use x to predict the response y. A prediction error in this case would be our residual y minus y hat. So now we are using the regression equation y hat to predict a response. And our residuals are going to be much smaller. So in this situation, y bar is the black line, y hat is the red line, and we can compare our residuals for both of these possible uh, predictors. One being y bar, that first possible prediction where we say that the true mean is the best guess for the temperature. And the other, where we say that the mean changes depending on the temper, uh, depending on the frequency of the cricket chirps. So, to determine which of these models is better, we compare the sum of squared errors, and that's just going to be the sum of squared prediction errors. What does that look like? Well. For model 1, our sum of squared errors is going to be these y minus y bar squareds. And again, that's observed minus predicted. So for model 1, all of our residuals are these blue lines. So here, this is a prediction error for that last observation. And we have all these different prediction errors. The squared prediction errors are then just the squares for each observation. So we take each residual, we square its size, and then we add up all those squares. And we can see that the residuals, or the squared residuals, are actually quite large. For model 2, because we're using our prediction equation, so to remind ourselves y hat equals a plus bx, we're using the chirps per second to predict rather than just the grand mean, we can see that our residuals, our prediction errors, are actually quite a bit smaller because we are allowing the predictor to move that line. And so with these smaller residuals, our squares are quite a bit smaller as well. And so when we sum up all of these squares, the sum of squares are a lot smaller. So if I were to choose between model 1 or model 2, looking at the sum of squared errors, model 2 has smaller residuals So it has smaller squared errors. So number one, all of these squared errors, all of these blue squares, that gets us our total sum of squares, or SS total. It is the sum of squared deviations in our response when we disregard any and all other information about our individuals, such as 
disregarding the information about the chirps per second. So when we use the grand mean, we're ignoring that information about the frequency of chirps, and we're just saying that the temperature is just the average, it's a constant. Number two is our residual sum of squares, or SS res, and we've seen this before. It's literally the sum of our squared residuals around our best fit line. Because our residuals are our prediction errors when we use the linear model, we refer to this as sum of squared residuals. Or sum of squared errors. And that's where that SSE comes from. So if we have good model fit, as it appears to be, as we appear to here, because all of those squares are fairly small, we have a strong positive linear association, the variability of the residuals should be small relative to the total variability in the response. So SSE should be small compared to SS total. If we have bad model fit, so if the model is not very useful in terms of predicting the response, so for example if we had something like this, or even something like that, where we just have a ton of variability, the variability of the residuals will be pretty close. the total variability in the response. Because if I were to draw a y bar here and my y hat here, we can see that those sum of squared errors relative to the sum of squared total are about the same. The residuals around y hat are basically the same as the prediction errors around y bar. So if we were to look at the output from jump when we fit a regression equation, we get an analysis of variance table. So what does that look like? Here are the cricket chirp data in jump, and if I were to go to analyze fit y by x, I would put temperature in my response, chirps per second in my explanatory or x variable, and I would request to fit a line. This is my analysis of variance table that is in the notes. So in this analysis of variance, we see a couple of pieces of output. We see a source, degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean square, and F ratio and p-value. This sum of squares is what we were looking at, specifically the sum of squares for error and the sum of squares for total. The sum of squares for error is the sum of squares for the residuals. That's telling me about the variability around my best fit line. The sum of squares for total is the SS total. That's telling me about the variability around the grand mean. So we can determine the quality of the model fit by comparing these two sums of squares, SSE and SS total. And we do that using this term, R squared. So remember, if we have good model fit, the variability of the residuals around the model should be small. So SSE should be small compared to SS total. If we have poor model fit, the variability of the residuals will be pretty close to the total variability in the response. So here, SSE is 190 and SS total is 629. 190 is pretty small compared to 629. So that's already kind of telling us that it's pretty good model fit. How good? Well, SS total minus SSE over SS total that should give us a pretty big number. So we want big R squared. What that's doing is comparing all of these residuals around my best fit line to the prediction errors around the grand mean. So this value, this R squared value, is called the proportional reduction in error.
says proportion proportional to the total error, the total error around the grand mean y bar, how much have I reduced the error by using my predictor? So proportional to the total variability, the total prediction error when I use the grand mean, how much less is the variability around the predicted uh, uh, prediction equation. So as an example, an R squared of 0.99 tells us that 99% of the total variability, because it's a proportion of the total, in the response is accounted for by using the model. Or if we think about a reduction in error, that 99% it means that using the model reduces the variability of our prediction error by 99%. If R squared is 0.99, the error in using the equation, so that is our prediction equation, to predict the response is 99% smaller than if we use the grand mean to predict the response. So this is telling us about the improvement in our prediction error, how much better we're doing or how much smaller our error is as a percent of variability. So what does that mean? Well, I said that this is telling us about the correlation. So if we have a small correlate, or excuse me, a, a small residuals, we're going to have a strong correlation. We talked about that in class. And so if we have small residuals, a strong correlation, that's going to tell us that we are going to have a better reduction in error. So that means that because correlation must be between negative 1 and positive 1, and r squared is our correlation squared, r must be between 0, or excuse me, r squared must be between 0 and 1. So we now have a link between correlation and this proportional reduction in error. And it kind of makes sense. If we have a strong linear association, that only happens when we have small prediction errors. It only happens when our points are very tightly clustered around the prediction equation. And if we have points tightly clustered around the prediction equation, then we're going to have good prediction, or meaning we're going to have a good reduction in error. On the other hand, if the points are loosely, varied around, or loosely clustered around the prediction equation, if there's high variability, then we're not going to have very good prediction. We're going to have weak or low reduction in the prediction error. So a strong correlation that means R is close to plus or minus 1. Therefore R squared will be close to 1. So a strong positive or a strong negative linear association means that we have a correlation close to plus or minus 1. But that means that we're going to have a big reduction in our prediction error. On the other hand, a weak correlation, so a weak positive or a weak negative linear association, that means R is going to be close to 0. And that means our observations are very loose, are very widely scattered around the line. And so therefore, r squared will be close to zero. We're not going to have very good explanation of that variability in our prediction error. r squared is good when we have small residuals. That's consistent with a strong linear association. Similarly, R squared is bad when we have big residual, uh, 
big residuals. That's also consistent with our correlation, but now it's consistent with a weak linear association. So bad R squared, this means large SSE. A good R squared means a small SSE. Let's compare these two plots. So here's our cricket chirps data again on the left. We described this originally as a moderate positive linear association and that was because the points were not hugely scattered but not also very tightly scattered around the line. So, and it was positive because as chirps increased or chirp frequency increased, temperature also tended to increase. And so now we can actually finally look at this R squared value. The R squared of 0.697 tells us that, yeah, this is fairly moderate. So how do we interpret this? R squared equals 0 0.69 using chirp frequency to predict temperature reduces the variability in temperature by 69%. So when we use this model, when we use this prediction equation to try to understand or predict temperature, we reduce the variability, we reduce our prediction error by 69%. That's not nothing. Contrast that with these randomly de generated data over here. So instead of calling this column one and column two, let's call this hugs and tree height. Just so we have some context, right? And so we see that as hugs tends to as hugs increases, the tree height doesn't tend to increase. It doesn't really tend to decrease. We will call this a weak association. I'm not really, it's kind of positive, so we'll call it a weak positive linear association. But it's hugely scattered around this line. There's not really anything going on, right? The points are all over the place. And that's borne out by the R squared here. So how would I interpret this? I would say using hugs to predict the height of trees accounts for only 2.6% of the total variability in tree height. So there's two different ways, two different but equivalent ways to interpret the R squared. One tells us about the reduction in total variability, so using chirp frequency to predict the temperature, so using the predictor to predict the response, reduces the variability by R squared by 69%. The other says that we can account for or explain the total variability by this much. We can explain 2.6% of the total variability when we use the predictor to predict the response. So that's R squared in a nutshell. I hope this makes sense and uh, you should be able to finish the lab now. Have a great weekend.